Hello from the Forcetronics YouTube channel. Welcome to using the ESP Now communication protocol to create a dynamic ESP32 wireless network. And this will be part one in a three part series. Before I get started, I just want to point out I now have a Patreon page. You can see the web address there. If you want to access the code from this series, it'll only be available on my Patreon page. My Patreon page is only $3 to join. If you don't want to do that, you're welcome to take screenshots from the videos to copy down the code. Either way, you can get the code from this video series. All right, with that said, let's get started. Okay, here's what we're going to cover in this three-part video series. We're going to give you an overview of what the ESP Now wireless protocol is, and we'll talk about how to use it and implement it to create a wireless device network. And the programming environment we're going to use for that is Arduino. Our, the network we're going to create using the ESP Now wireless communication protocol will be a dynamic network. And what I mean by that is we can easily add and remove ESP32 nodes from the network without shutting down the network without resetting it, right? We can dynamically change the amount of nodes on the network. So that's what we're going to set up here or design here. And we'll also talk about how to retrieve the ESP32 MAC address and how to handle MAC addresses because we're going to use MAC addresses as a unique identifier for our nodes on our network. As I mentioned, this is going to be a three-part series. So in part one, we're just going to talk about the ESP Now wireless communication protocol. I'm going to give you a basic overview of it and tell you where the documentation is. And then we'll talk about the plan for our ESP32 dynamic wireless network. What is going to be the wireless network layout? What exactly do I mean by dynamic? In part two and three, that's when we start digging into the code. So in part two, we're going to look at a basic example of ESP Now and how to deal with handling and sending MAC addresses. So we'll look at a demo and we'll review the code. And the code from part two serves as a foundation for part three. And then in part three, we're going to have our full ESP Now dynamic wireless network designed. We'll demo it and then we'll go through the, uh, the code, of course. Okay, let's start with an overview of ESP Now. So ESP Now provides an easy way to create a private network for multiple ESP32 module devices. And of course, they can communicate with each other wirelessly. What's nice about ESP Now is if you use Arduino and you're using the board manager and you have your ESP32 board manager set up, you automatically have access to the ESP Now library. You don't have to go out and get it. It's already going to be available for you. And your ESP32 module will have the hardware capabilities to use the library. So it's already available for you and it's really easy to use as we'll see in part two and three. Now, what's nice about ESP Now, or I should say what's clever about ESP Now is it leverages the Wi-Fi hardware that's already in the ESP32. And what it does is it leverages aspects of the Wi-Fi standard or the 802.11 standard. And so what I like about this is Expressif, the company that makes the ESP32 modules, they must have a nice clever engineer that looked at the Wi-Fi standard and said, hey, I can leverage features in the Wi-Fi standard to create my own private wi not Wi-Fi network, but wireless network of ESP32 modules. How does ESP now do this? Well, it takes advantage of the 802.11 standards vendor specific action frame. So this is a frame that's part of the 802.11 Wi-Fi communication packet. So what they're doing is they found this, this feature in Wi-Fi that they, they realized they could use to create a proprietary or private wireless network using the Wi-Fi hardware. So anyway, I thought that was pretty clever. Now ESP now is designed to support up to 21 connected ESP32 devices. And the protocol allows you to send up to 250 bytes of data per packet. Now, a couple notes on this. It can only support up to 21 connected devices if you're not using encryption. If you do decide to use encryption, you can only support up to about 11 devices. And of course, this is all in the documentation. Now, 250 bytes per packet, you know, is not a great amount of data, right? So it's not necessarily for streaming large amounts of data. This is more for setting up like a wireless sensor network or maybe like a home automation network where you're just sending 
basic data to do control things or to read values back from a sensor or something like that. Now, one thing that I found lacking in the ESP32, or I should say ESP Now documentation, and we'll take a look at that web page and I'll provide a link in this video description, is it doesn't talk about the do's and don'ts in using ESP Now with Wi-Fi or using them both in parallel. Or maybe they don't want you to do that, but they don't tell you that in the documentation. And, and by the way, if you have found documentation where they do talk about that, please you know, share it in the comments section. So I believe you can use them in parallel, but you have to be careful of when you turn on and turn off certain functionalities. And maybe that's something I'll cover in my next video series. Okay, I grabbed this from the ESP Now documentation, the Expressive ESP Now documentation on the website. And what I wanted to just kind of show you is how this relates a little bit to the Wi-Fi standard or how it directly relates to the Wi-Fi standard, but I'm not going to get into big detail. Up at the top from the ESP Now website, we have sort of a packet, a Wi-Fi, a standard sort of Wi-Fi packet, and there's different types of Wi-Fi packets. But of course, the main way you communicate in Wi-Fi or the unique identifier in Wi-Fi is the MAC address. So if we zoom in on this vendor specific content frame, so the Wi-Fi standard made this so vendors that have devices on the same Wi-Fi network can actually communicate with each other or send data to each other, right? So this is something the Wi-Fi standard implemented and Expressive found a way to, hey, we could leverage this to create our own private network. So here I zoom in on this vendor specific frame how the uh, expressive folks are using it. And most of these parts of the frame, we don't have to worry about. The main thing that we populate when we send data is the body, which like I said before, supports up to 250 bytes of data. Now what I have here on the bottom didn't come from the ESP Now documentation. This actually came from the 802.11 or Wi-Fi standard. And you can see this frame and this frame pretty much match, right? So this is not something Expressive made up. They're actually leveraging something from the Wi-Fi standard. Here we're looking at the documentation, the online documentation for the ESP Now protocol. And here they describe how it works, what it can do. You can see this, uh, this is the frame that I just showed on my slide. So this is basically where I got it from. Now, one thing I will say, here's where they talk about the encryption and things like that. Here's what, one thing I will say about this documentation is I did find it kind of lacking. It doesn't go into great detail, or at least the detail I was looking for. I have a feeling it was written by someone who maybe English is not their first language. Uh, that's not a put down, by the way. I, I can, I'm a dumb American. I can only speak one language. So Whoever wrote this is doing better than me as far as language is concerned, but that is my one criticism of this ESP now is the documentation is a little lacking. But anyway, if you go through this documentation, it does describe it. It does talk about all the different functions, the different macros that go along with the library. And once again, in part two, we'll start digging into some of these functions and using the library in Arduino. But once again, if you want to read this over to go into more detail, because I just provided a basic overview, I'll provide this link in the video description. Okay, the last thing that I wanted to talk about in part one is our plan for our wireless network design using ESP Now. There's a lot of ways you can configure a network. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to have a primary node, which will just be one single ESP32 device, and then I'll have up to 20 secondary nodes. So the primary node in a design, this would serve as the node that links to your user interface and where you would change settings for the network, where you would add devices or maybe delete devices. And when I say that secondary nodes, when I say devices, uh, this is where you might read sensor data or use controls from your smartphone or a touch screen to send data to these or change settings in you know, home automation or something like that. Right, so that's what the primary node's goal is. And you know, for our simple example, I'm just gonna use the Arduino serial monitor for our user interface for the primary node. The secondary nodes, their goal is to either be collecting data or to do simple controls or both, right? So they can be deployed in your, your garden, checking moisture levels, 
measuring the sun, things like that, or they could be in a home automation system, something like that. And of course, there all this communication is going to be done wirelessly. Now with our network design, the primary node can talk to all the secondary nodes at once or one at a time. The secondary nodes can relay data back to the primary nodes. But in this network setting, I'm not going to have the secondary nodes talk to each other. Now ESP now allows that capability, but that's not how I'm going to design the network. And then, as I mentioned before, our network's going to be dynamic. So in real time, we'll be able to add or delete secondary nodes from our network, right? So let's say you start with only a couple nodes and you want to build the network bigger as you, you know, put more secondary nodes together. Maybe you want to monitor something somewhere and then switch somewhere else. So you might want to delete or add nodes. Maybe your secondary nodes are battery powered. So when the battery power runs out, it goes dead you charge it and you throw in a different node. So that's that's what I mean when I say our net network's gonna be dynamic. Okay, that's it for part one. As I mentioned in part two, we'll look at a, a simple example of ESP now, how to implement it and how to deal with MAC addresses because there are main ways of how we can add or delete secondary nodes from our network. And then of course, the code that we're gonna look at in the demo we're gonna look at in part two will be built upon further for part three where we have our full network design. And I'll have separate sketches for, of code from part two, and then I'll have a separate sketch of code for part three. And I'll have sketches for, for both the primary and secondary nodes. All right, if you have any questions from part, part one, please use the comment section. If you wanna add anything or something maybe I missed, use the comment section. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you back here for part two.